In today's video, I'm going to share with you how to use generative AI tools to speed up learning and doing data science projects. We are not talking about copy pasting things from ChatGPT. We are talking about using those tools right inside your favorite IDEs such as VS Code and JupyterLab. I believe these tools can really double or triple your process of learning and doing projects. Data cleaning, pre-processing and exploration can take up to 80% of the time in a data science project. So these tools can save you a lot of time for the more interesting and more important analysis. But at the same time, these AI coding tools are not perfect and there are several concerns, especially if you want to use them in your jobs. So we'll discuss these issues later in this video. Without further ado, let's get started. The first tool I want to share with you is Jupyter AI. It's a Python library that provides a user-friendly way to explore generative AI models in notebooks. It's especially convenient for people who use Jupyter Lab, but if you use other IDEs, you can also use it as well. Here's the documentation for this library. Let me quickly show you how to install it on a Mac OS. I'm using an M1 MacBook, but if you're using a different machine, these steps can be slightly different. But feel free to skip this part and jump right to the demo part, which is more juicy. Okay, it's recommended that we use Conda to install this library. So if you don't have Conda, you can go ahead and download Mini Conda to your computer and install it. And after you finish installing, you should restart your terminal window. Okay, now we use Conda to install some prerequisites. So firstly, we'll install Python 3.10 and JupyterLab as well. We use Python 3.10 because this is the latest Python version that is supported by this library. Additionally, we also need to check if we have Jupyter Server 2.x uh, and not 1.x. And we can check the current server version by running Jupyter version and check for the line beginning with uh, Jupyter Server. And here we do have the Jupyter Server version 2, so it's all good. And now we go ahead and create a virtual environment just to avoid any conflict with any of your earlier package versions. So I'll do Conda create and test Jupyter AI is the name of my virtual environment. And we are using Python 3.10 for this virtual environment. And now we can activate this environment and install Jupyter AI. For some reason, for MacBook M1 specifically, we also need to uninstall the grpcio package from pip and reinstall it with Conda. Don't ask me why, I just follow the documentation. So after doing all these steps, we can check if the Jupyter AI server extension is enabled by running Jupyter server extension list. If everything is enabled, that's good. And to verify that the front-end extension is also installed, we can run Jupyter lab extension list. Okay, as I want to use OpenAI models, I will also pip install OpenAI and then we can start JupyterLab. Now, let me create a new notebook and load the Jupyter AI extension. To use OpenAI models, we also need to set our OpenAI API key as an environment variable. So let me quickly do that. If you want to share this notebook with other people, please make sure to hide your API key somewhere. Okay, everything is now set up. Now to ask questions, you can use the AI magic to write your prompt just like you do with ChatGPT. But the cool thing is that you can specify the language model that you want to use. From this list, we can see which generative models are supported by this extension and what environment variables that we need to set in order to use them. Let's say that I want to use ChatGPT model to write a Python function that replaces all the missing values with zero in numeric columns of a data frame. And after a few seconds, there you have it. It's good to note that this magic comment also works anywhere the IPython kernel runs. So JupyterLab, Jupyter Notebook, VS Code, or Google Colab. Now, if you don't want the text explanation in the response and only want the code, you can specify the format of the output as well by adding the format argument. In this case, we can choose a format to be code. The code output will then be automatically generated in a separate cell. That's pretty cool, right? And we can also play around with other formats as well, such as Markdown, Math, HTML, JSON, or text. What I like about this Jupyter AI library is that you can actually use different language models. So you can specify the language model here and you will have different output 
potentially um, using different models. And you can compare and contrast and evaluate different models together. One idea for testing them is also to use a coding example from a reliable source like a book. And then based on that, you can actually evaluate the output of the different models. In addition to using magics, you can also use the chat interface to interact with the language models. So you might notice that we have a chat icon here in the left side panel of Jupyter Lab. This chat UI is part of the Jupyter AI extension. And here you can specify what you want to use as a language model. In this case, I use ChatGPT and what you want to use as an embedding model and you can enter your API key here, which is the same as what I had before. There are many more things you can do within this chat interface. For example, you can ask about something in your notebook by highlighting what you want to explain. So let me highlight this chunk of code and ask what does this code do in the chat panel. And we check the include selection option here to include the selected code into my prompt. Then you'll get the response explaining what this chunk of code does. Another thing that I always forget to do is to write documentation for my functions. So let's say if I have this function, I'll ask the AI to create a doc string for this function describing the parameters and what the function does. You may want to check and adjust some details, but I think this is very useful. And another way you can use the tool is to ask it to optimize a function that you just wrote. For example, if you know that you just wrote a very inefficient for loop like the one that I have here, you can select it and ask the AI to optimize it for you. And then make sure to check the code and see if it's working properly. Another cool thing I want to show you is generating notebooks. After oh. all, a blank page can be scary and I hate starting things from scratch. So you can ask JupyterNode to generate notebooks by starting your message with slash generate comment. For example, I want to create a tutorial notebook of how to use Seaborn library. Generating notebooks can take a few minutes. So while you're waiting, you can also continue to ask other questions. And once the notebook is ready, Jupyter AI will send you another the message with the file name that it generated. So let me open it. It's quite basic and some things might not be working completely, but you can see that this could be a very good starting point. Another useful thing you can do is to teach Jupyter AI about local data so that it can include it when answering your questions. This local data is embedded using the embedding model that you selected in the settings panel. But be careful that if your data is confidential or sensitive, make sure that you review the data policies of model provider before doing this. If I have a document like this, I want to teach Jupyter AI, I can use the slash learn comment and together with the path of the document, and then you will receive a response when Jupyter AI has indexed this documentation into a local vector database. And after that, you can use the slash ask command to ask questions specifically about the data that you just taught Jupyter AI. So this can be useful if you don't want to find information in the document yourself. And to help the AI unlearn this document, you can run this command and Jupyter AI will delete the local vector database and forget all the information that you have taught it. It's important to note that when you embed a big document or include a large chunk of code in your prompt, this could cost you more money. And so do watch your usage if this is the case. The second tool that you might have heard of is GitHub Copilot. This is an AI pair programmer that is trained on publicly available code on GitHub. GitHub Copilot is available as an extension on VS Code or PyCharm, which are popular IDEs for data nodes like us. It's free to use for students and teacher. And since I'm still a student technically, although I do have a day job, I can install it and use it for free. Otherwise, you can pay like $10 per month, which is totally worth it if you can just save a few hours of your time, in my opinion. As I already have this extension installed in my VS Code, I'll just show you how I would use it. You can use your comments as the prompt. So if I say import pandas, numpy, and scikit-learn, the code will be suggested for me to install those libraries. If you want to approve the code, you can just hit the tab key. Then I want to read the data set, which is what I have here. And then I want to display this data frame and show some descriptive statistics and maybe check for missing values as well. Now, I want to also explore the data a bit more visually. So 
For example, I want to create a Pearson correlation matrix of numeric features and display the heat map. So it's all super, super quick. And I can also ask the co-pilot to create a plot for me to further explore the relationships between two variables. Honestly, I don't remember by heart the code for all these steps. So if I have to do it manually by myself, it would take me maybe half an hour to an hour Googling and searching Stack Overflow and searching Stack Overflow or documentation. So this tool can help you really speed up and get some initial results very quickly. From there, you're gonna get more ideas for further analysis and decide what to focus on. A free alternative to GitHub Copilot is Amazon Code Whisperer, which is developed by Amazon apparently. You can also use this tool as an extension on VS Code or PyCharm or JupyterLab, but I doubt it can be better than GitHub Copilot. Also recently, Hugging Face also also developed a new language model for coding assistant called Star Coder. It's a new kit in the blog, it's completely open source, so that means it's completely free to use and you can also fine tune it to create your own coding assistant. And you can play with it in the playground for this model here. I think it works pretty decent for Python. However, I haven't tried and tested Star Coder and Amazon Code Whisperer in detail, so if you give it a try, let me know what you think. Okay, as we've seen earlier, this generative AI tools can be very powerful and useful, but you can't overly rely on them due to many limitations. Firstly, privacy is a huge concern. This often makes companies reluctant to let their employees use these tools for work purpose. When using these tools, you may be sharing your code or potentially sensitive information with a third party. Your conversations may be saved and used for further training of the model. So we should definitely check the privacy policies of these tools. And I think it's best to only use them for non-sensitive information. Using APIs on a private server may help to avoid this issue, but I'm not an expert on data privacy and security. So do consult some experts if you have doubts. Another concern is that a lot of times it's not clear which data the language models were trained on, whether the code are open source or permissively licensed. And this is another reason why companies Companies are not yet willing to use these tools because they don't want to get into troubles regarding the intellectual property. The third limitation is quite well known. The suggested code can produce errors or incorrect results, and perhaps even worse, you might get code that is vulnerable to security exploits. So instead of cleaning your own mess, you might be now cleaning the AI's mess. If you're interested in learning more about language model safety, check out this earlier video over here. And I hope this video is helpful and thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.